is she talking to now? What is she up to next? Where in the world will she be? Talk to us, me. I was so, um, I guess for lack of any other word, excited to see you again. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Because I think, I think that your writing is exceptional. Oh, thank you so much. I do. I really do. And I, I'm, like we all are over 50 now, there's very little out there for our palettes that you can just kind of sit down and say, okay, this is something for me. Yeah. So I was, I'm was, i appreciative of that. Oh, well, thank you. But I've got questions. Good. Well, I, that's what I did. I wanted to make a movie. Uh, you know, I loved the movies of the 60s and 70s, especially by the the, uh, sort of the French New Wave and the, the Italians and people that were telling stories in a whole new ways. And I remember when I saw a blow up and, you know, it was a murder mystery, supposedly. And then you're told towards the end there is never going to be an answer. And then it ends in a tennis game between mimes and that's supposed to explain the movie. And you went left going, what? And then you thought about it and thought about it and you started to realize the themes and what he was doing. And, and I like movies that stick with you, that don't give you all the answers. They're all there if you really look for them. But they aren't underlined. They aren't all in bold. They aren't all, you know, in uppercase. You have to you have to work with it. And so I, 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 I personally love the films where uh, we have an emotional reaction at the end, but you don't necessarily know why. And you go out on the street with your friends afterwards and, and or to the coffee shop or the bar and you talk about it and you argue about it and you say, did you notice this? And, no, that's mean that. And that's, that's the kind of film I wanted to make. Well, I, for me, what surfaced were several themes. Yeah. The first note I wrote, irresponsible adults. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. And I said, okay, is there a message that he is communicating by displaying them? Then there was a message around fatherhood, yeah. and I wonder the release of this film is near Father's Day. Did, was that coincidence? Complete coincidence. I didn't even notice. Uh, the uh, no, but it's, it's about you know, you know, you know, obviously about parents and children. A lot of this movie is that, and uh, trying to protect children, trying to save children, trying to try, trying to deal with with how we've betrayed them, how we've let them down. Um, that's obviously one of the themes. But, and then love, and just you know, parental love, but also seeking love from someone else and being able to accept it uh, and being able to be vulnerable, uh, being able to trust you know, when there's no reason to trust, uh, especially you know, what, what, what is it like to trust someone who's completely untrustworthy, you know, who you know uh, you shouldn't believe in. And if you believe in them, no matter what, is love transformative? Do people rise? to that, do they become what we imbue them with? Or, like James Franco's character, if you damn them, if you say, look at yourself, you need to look at yourself right now, because what you're doing, I know what you're up to. You can't fool me. I know what you're up to. Confess. What happens there? Do we get what we need? Do we get what we want out of that? And in Liam, you get a man who is ostensibly writing and rewriting his own life. So help me with this. What of it was real with the Olivia Wilde character and the Kim Basinger character? Are they real or imagined? Well, I want to leave that open to people to, to think about. I know what I think, right? Uh, and obviously, you know, it, it's, we, we pull from the people in our lives, right? And we often try to we use people in our lives for stories. We, we betray them by telling their stories. Um, and uh, and then maybe they become characters after that, you know. Maybe they they'll never leave us. Maybe they haunt us. You know, maybe as, as he's sitting in the square watching something can't happen. She's not there. She's reading a, 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 a his journal that obviously isn't there. Is that you know he's, she's become. I spoke to the judge. He agreed to a second psychiatric assessment. That shrink hated me before I even walked in. Well, let's make a better impression this time because his statement was really damaging. How did anyone even look at the report? Come on, it was an accident. How many kids have died because of dry cleaning bags? I saved his life. Julia, you failed the lie detector test. I'm the one that insisted on doing it. And I told you it was a bad idea. Why, you have to understand. No, 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 it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right now, we just need to convince the judge that you're stable enough to get visitation again. Really? What's the hurry? It's only been 12 months. Well, you haven't really been helping yourself. Did you get a job? I've had half a dozen jobs. One that you keep for more than a week. We need a positive report. Gina will give you the address, 4 o'clock tomorrow. No, that's, that's great. Let me... 
Let me ask to leave early the first week of a brand new job. Just use that pretty smile of yours. It's gonna be okay. Okay. There are parallels throughout. Whose story is this? Because it's not just a Liam Neeson no, it's not. character. Whose story is this? Well, I think it's, you know, it's... Hopefully, it's all the characters, because hopefully you will see something in each of those characters, or at least some of the characters, that will uh, that you'll identify with, that, that you'll say, oh, that's, that's part of me, a part of me I really love or don't like, you know, or, or it's a part of somebody else who I really loved and mistreated, or someone who mistreated me, you know, when I, when, and, and because, you know, it's, we all struggle with this feeling of, of are we worth enough? Uh, are, are, are we worthy of love? Can we trust someone uh, to, to love us? Uh, or if we open up to them, will they automatically betray us? Um, you know, it's, uh, we, we all struggle with that. So I think that's in all the characters. All those characters are me and, and uh, you know, the women, the men. Uh, they all deal with issues that, that I've, I've dealt with in relationships. And, of course, it's about the creative process and what, how selfish we are as creators, as writers, and, and who pays the price for our selfishness. It's not us, others. People we love pay that price, and you see that in Liam's story. And and the, but you also see, I mean, in, in, as he's reflecting on, you've got Maria Bello's character uh, who is damning her husband, saying, "I will never forgive you." Now, if that truly is a story, then perhaps Liam's more character is more comfortable being damned than he is being forgiven. You know, which is you know because you've got his wife who is forgiving him for a choice or a similar tragedy or maybe the same tragedy and and that's kind of hard for me except he can't even go home you know it's like he's, he's lost and he's, he's tried to find salvation tried to make sense of his life so what we do as writers we we try to make sense of our life through our characters we, 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 we try to put life in order and yet if you listen to your characters they often lead you to places you don't want to go things you don't want to face, and obviously that's what's happening with Liam. The characters are quite literally leading him to things he doesn't want to see. she having one of those days? Don't talk about what you don't understand. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm being insensitive. I'm the one who just took a call from my spouse while I was with my lover. I was stupid. I'm sorry. It's the most overused word in your vocabulary. Anna, I really need you to stop attacking me. If you needed that, you wouldn't be with me. I left her two weeks ago. What did you tell her? That I had fallen in love with someone else. <sighs> me? That you loved me? I thought you loved her. That's what you've always said. I do. So this is the way you treat someone you love? You don't even know what the word means. I know. Don't <laughs> touch me. Do you think I care? Do you think I could ever love someone as deceitful as you? This was not the deal. Now you're gonna go and find someone and f around on me. Stop this. Did you tell her who I was? Did you? No. I'm going to my room. Thanks for the notes. Well, if in fact this is a, an introspective sort of reflection of the lives we lead, life as a writer, how has your family been able to support you as a writer and embrace you emotionally, knowing the proclivities and all of the other yeah. habits? You know, I, I've gone through two marriages. Uh, my uh, second wife, uh, who we're now divorced, is, is my best friend. Best friend. And uh, she reads all my scripts, uh, some of the lines in this, this movie came from her. Uh, and uh, my kids are, you know, Love me despite my flaws, uh, despite the fact that I sometimes don't deserve it, and the fact that I've, you know, worked so much. You know, the guilt I carry about my children is that I was never there. I worked so much. I worked as a furniture mover, for, first of all, for eight, ten hours a day, and then I'd come home and I'd write for three or four hours after that. I wasn't available to them. And then when I finally got work in comedies and sitcoms, I'd work constantly. I'd be, you have to work so hard to make it. And and we try to pretend that we're doing that for our family and lovers. We're not. We're selfish. We're doing it for ourselves. Uh, and yes, they get they get the benefits of you know of the, of the lifestyle and that. But that's 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 a poor second. 
so uh, yeah, so I still carry that guilt, even if they're, my kids are really close to me. I love them all, and, and they, they all understand me and, 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 and my sometimes ridiculous choices in life. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, I'm worthy of that. Are they two writers, any of them? Yes, Alyssa, my eldest daughter, is a writer, and she's, uh, she writes with me often now. Uh, we've, we've got a movie that we're hoping to do uh, very soon called The Ranger's Apprentice that uh, we've written together based on a series of books. Uh, she's written other things with me. She researches for me. My middle daughter is an artist, a fine artist, a beautiful painter. My youngest daughter is, uh, is, is working in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Detroit right now on the, the movie uh, uh, Batman and Superman, or Superman and Batman, and she's, uh, she's an assistant on, uh, on that, and uh, loving it. And my son, who my second marriage, James, just turned 16. I'm not sure what he's going to do yet, but uh, he loves telling stories. He also loves science and math, so we'll see where he goes. He didn't want this? No, it's for you. He asked me to pour it. He did? Why? She asked him to take care of you. Who did? In the elevator. She asked him to take care of you. How do you know? He told me when he asked for the milk. Well, did he say anything else? Did she say anything else to him? No. She didn't say that she was sorry? No. What, you are equal parts what? Because you have ownership of this whole thing. Producer, yeah. writer, director. Yeah. So if you were to describe you to me, you are equal parts what? Oh, mess. <laughs> I was a guy who's trying to tell an honest story and to tell it as well as I can. Um, and that's it. I'm just a storyteller. Nothing beyond the storyteller? No, just a storyteller. Nothing you'd like to share beyond the storyteller? Oh, no. A storyteller should, 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 um, uh, should, I mean, you have to be able to reveal yourself. This is a highly personal movie. I mean, uh, uh, everything in this movie is, is true, just none of it happened. But you know, but it's, there's there's lots of things that are that you know there's lines of dialogue I said to others that others said to me that just infuse this this script uh, and the situations I found myself in and, and 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 but I can picture myself in each of those characters. Mila Kunis's character is someone who's just being misunderstood. James Franco's character is someone who's damning someone else. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Adrian character who just wants to be a hero, wants to save somebody, and is willing to even steal to do that. Is willing to to do the most ridiculous things. And who will believe in someone, even when they won't believe in themselves? Who will go that far for love? Um, so yeah, I see myself in all the characters, not just Liam. Olivia's character, you know, she's just such a damaged, damaged, frail character, and yet so strong. You've worked with her before. Three times. I like I like working with characters with actors in multiple movies. Mm. We, meaning the body, um, the general body, general public, find Liam Neeson so fascinating yeah. before his tragic loss of his wife yes. and certainly afterwards, him redefining his movie star image. Yeah. How do you see him? I, I see him as a man. I mean, he's, he's uh, one, one of the, the great men of cinema. You look at him and you go, that's a man. And he's very vulnerable. He's very available. But he's, he's, he's very manly. And that's what I wanted this guy, is, is a guy who was, who just, you couldn't deny as his, his, his appeal as a man, and yet the type of actor that you put in a role like this you would never think would betray someone. He's too trustworthy, he's too lovely, you can depend on this guy. He's not going to be selfish. Is the whole story in his head, the entire thing that you've presented? Um, is this for the record or not? <laughs> you tell me where you want it. Off. <laughs> okay. Off record. Okay. Yeah, of course it is. Okay. The, uh, and, you know, the, it is, and, and, you know, and then you have, you know, uh, uh, you have Kim, who is obviously there, and is reading his book, you know, Kim and, and his wife, and you have 
she's, she's having, he is having this affair with, with Olivia Wilde, and yet she does become a character at some point. She's not really in the square at the end. She's not. He's, she's obviously turning from one character into another as these characters quite literally lead him to, to the thing he can't face, the, the, to the, the thing he's been trying to avoid the whole time. Because I wonder, when you talk about there being clues, one of the, one of the earlier ones, um, or maybe not so early, is the Mila Kunis character. Yeah. The hotel rooms change. Yes. Well, the hotel rooms don't change, really. The note goes from New York to Paris and back to, and back to New York, and the flowers do the same. And so I wanted to tell you, these are things that happen actually before that that go by. You just don't even notice uh, because they're, they're very subtle in the background. But uh, I wanted to say, okay, okay, okay. I wanted people to go, what? What's going on here? This is confusing. But unless the filmmakers made a terrible mistake, which some one reviewer actually said, it was, a, it was a really quite a good film, but they have to pay attention to the continuity because at least she's suddenly in two countries. Like, yeah, as if I didn't notice that. <laughs> the, uh, but it, the, obviously, if that can't happen, what's happening? You know, where are these stories come from? How much is it real? How much is it not real? The fact that, okay, you see she's suddenly in Liam's room as well as in this room across the ocean, you know, and, and the same, all the characters start to cross. You see them, you know, the, the cross of the hallways. You see them, everything, where they cannot physically be. So obviously something else is going on here. There's another reality that this, this movie's taking place on. And that's what I want to start to, to, to give the hint. You ca the cast, I I'd like you to comment on the cast, because you make us wait for the payoff. I thought the cast was pivotal. Yeah. And everybody, you could rest your curiosity on the cast, because yeah. you could, they linger. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They're, they're wonderful. And, and, they, and often, uh, that's because uh, uh, I've asked them to, and they've rushed to, uh, to do characters that they don't usually play. And they're they're all very brave in this, and, and they're they're all very vulnerable. And they're, they're, I mean, Olivia's never played anything like this. I mean, she's and she was so scared of this, personally. And then, but she did such a fine job. Uh, yeah, and Liam hasn't played a romantic lead in twenty years. Uh, it's what he told me. Not, no, over twenty years is the last romantic lead he's played. The uh, you know, James Franco, who is so present and so and 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 is willing to be so awful, and yet we feel for him. Um, you've got Amila, who, I mean, look what Amila does in this movie, kind of amazing. Yeah. And then you've got Adrian, who has, usually plays a ladies' man, usually plays this, and he's a, and he's a man who's so needy in this, and, and is willing to, to, to love this woman despite everything, and just continue to follow a woman who keeps pushing him away. That's not who he is. And then you've got Moran, who does a brilliant job as, as, as the gypsy, you know, and she's, this is her first major role. And, and she steps up and goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Adrian Brody, right down, right down the line. And uh, then smaller roles like Loan Chabonol, who plays uh, Sam, the, the French girl who did, who uh, was in this movie this year, and also she was in uh, 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 the film with Woody Allen, uh, the, the Fading Gigolo. She was in the last scene of that. <coughs> yeah. I love Fading Gigolo. Wasn't it great? Well, the last scene, the French girl in the in the uh, in the cafe that they're flirting with, that's her. You know, it's so different. But that's her, and she's like teasing them and, and, and back and forth. That's, that's Loan. And, uh, and, and David Harewood. David, absolutely, who's wonderful. Plays the agent. Great. I love David. I never got a chance to work with him before, but I loved him in this. Mm -hmm. because I wanted someone who that sets that sort of moral authority. And he, where David really has that, you know. And you sit down, he tells you that, and you believe that. Do you have a friend like that in your life? Yeah, uh, Deborah, my ex-wife. She, 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 and, and Gregory, uh, who's another person I trusted, Gregory Geddes, who's uh, actually my brother-in-law from my first marriage, who's been my best, best friend since I was 21 years old. And uh, they'll, they'll tell me the truth. Stephen Nathan as well, another one, who, a friend of mine who's been a friend for a long time. You should be writing about me. Are you? I write about what I know. And you know me. It's supposed to be about a man who can only feel through the characters he creates, but he keeps trying to be something else. Is she there? No. Hi, Daddy. I miss you. My daughter. You have kids? Girl, I don't see her two years. I'm sorry for staring. Very hard not to. We just need to convince the judge that you're stable enough to get visitation again. What do you want, Julia? I need to be able to touch him. He is my son. Give me a hint. Yeah. 
<laughs> Don't say that. This is Daddy's work. <laughs> yeah. Watch me. I need you to look at what you did. I need you to face what you can't face, and I need you to tell me the truth. Will you help me? No questions. Tell me. Tell me that you did it. Do you know how long she talked about showing you how she could swim? She was always trying to get your attention. All you had to do was watch her, and you couldn't even do that. You learned a lot to forgive myself. Come home. Please. Begging? Come with me. Where? Anywhere. I'm never gonna let you see him again. No, you said it! No! no! You really don't feel a thing, do you? Love, love. It's people you don't have time for. How much do you want to know from your friends about their true feelings? I want to know it all. I don't want to, I don't necessarily agree with them. But I want to know. I mean, there are often. How often do we hear, "Oh, you should not be with that man." You know, I should not be with that woman. You got now. They're probably right, but maybe they don't see it in the way we see them. Right? You know, we, we see we see a, a vulnerability, or we see something in them that that's, that's worth all that, and they can't see that. Maybe they're right. They probably are, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't go there. So I don't always listen to my to my friends, but I really appreciate. They love me enough to tell me what they really think. At the start of this conversation, you mentioned <clears throat> this movie centers on our obligation to children and to care for them and to keep them safe. And none of the children are really safe in this film. Why is there such a juxtaposition? Well, because it's really from the adult's point of view. I mean, it was because it's what they fear is going to happen to this child, or what they, what if if, if the wrong hands, or, or, or what they they feel they've done to a child. You know, it's you know, it's really, it's it's it's. Children are incredibly resilient. Many of them, uh, and uh, sometimes you know, awful things happen. But um, but we are the guilt that we carry. Um, is, is, it just goes on and on and on. Um, so I, I found that fascinating. So what has life been like for you the past five years? Um, well, this I've been doing this, writing the script and making this movie for five years now. Uh, ever since uh, I ended, I finished shooting the next three days before it even came out. Uh, so it's been a, a real creative struggle and and great joy. A great joy and discovery in, in the scripts and the characters and, and, and reveling in the, the romance of it and the sexiness of it and all, and all that and yet really investigating you know my own motives and my own fears and 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 how my own failures as a, as a father as a lover as, as, as a husband and um, so that's that's good I think it's good I think it's led me into a better place are the expectations that you have for yourself now more difficult or easier to accept? <clears throat> I think it's always been the same. I've just been trying to tell a good story, to find a good story and tell it well. And, um, and so I don't have expectations about you know, awards or success or those kinds of things. It, obviously, it's, it's, it's lovely to be universally loved. That's not me. It's never going to be me. Uh, my films tend to divide people. They tend to upset people. They tend to people love them or hate them. And I've accepted that, so I, I don't. I'm not trying to convince everybody. I'm just trying to uh, to um, satisfy myself, and hopefully, if I do that, then uh, it, it, it might satisfy others. I'm trying to be true to myself. And what is your personal comment about my personal comment on appreciating movies for adults forty plus? I love that. That's what I want to write. I just, I mean, I love. I would love to write the next Batman or the, some other the X Men stories or direct one of those. It'd be fabulous and fun, but uh, we can't have all of those. We can't just that. And and uh, independent films are still being made, but it's harder and harder to get them seen. 
uh, because the budgets, and look at this, I mean, do you see any billboards? Do you see any TV ads? No, because we can't afford them. And so we rely on word of mouth. That's all of it. And so if the audience comes, then it'll be successful and I'll go make another film. If they don't come, it's going to be really hard to make my next uh, because you, you have to, it's a business. It's not just art and fun. It's a business, and so you have to be respectful of that. And so, uh, and you also have to keep a balance. You have to be commercial in some way. But I learned very early on, you know, when I decided to, well, when I got fired from television and decided to just to write Crash and Million Dollar Baby, Million Dollar Baby, girl boxing and euthanasia, Crash, race and class, and 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 and, 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 it, and, it, and it pointed the finger at liberals and said you're racist, liberals. You know, you know, and neither of those were going to be financially successful, neither of those are going to be commercial, and yet they're both incredibly financial, successful, and both very commercial. Did I plan it? No, I plan I planned just to tell a story and, and, and take risks. And so that's all I can do now. And then hopefully people will come to those and appreciate them or, and and, uh, and so I'll continue to be able to have this terrific life of being able to tell stories. I don't need to be the rich guy who has houses all over the world. Uh, I, I need to be able to tell stories. Are you chasing those two films? Chasing which In sorry. any way? Are you chasing Crash no, and Million Dollar Baby? No, no, no. I mean, I, 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 I wish I was. I wish I could find stories. I mean, it, it, those were just, that was fabulous finding, you know, creating, creating one and, and telling the other in a row. And uh, I would love to find stories as good. That's what I struggle for each time is to try and tell a story as well. And that's, uh, but I mean, I would say, In the Valley of Ella was one of my favorite films that had no success at all. And yet Tommy Lee Jones and Shirley's were brilliant in that, and I love that movie. Mm -hmm. So, and I'll be proud of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I loved the next three days. I, I thought you know, it was, was taking a French film and making it darker. <laughs> you know? And so, and, uh, and, and working with Russell and, and, and telling that kind of a, the kind of a caper film, which are the kind of films I loved. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I love this one, so I'm, I'm blessed. In closing, as a writer, describe your muse, be it topography or environment. Well, uh, I, I get inspired by people. Uh, I like being challenged uh, by people. Uh, I like being uh, fascinated by, 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 by people I meet, uh, people I get to know, people who open up to me, uh, reveal themselves to me, whether they're men or women or whatever. I, I really get inspired by that. So. Just these kinds of interchanges where you do have honest dialogue and you really get down to talking about real things and things that scare you. Uh, I guess that's my news. After months of training, the grand tradition returns to the oldest one mile track in America. Heart pounding, thrill riding, edge of your seat excitement as live horse racing returns to the Alameda County Fair. Presenting Oak Tree at Pleasanton. Live thoroughbred racing with a new look and bigger prize money. Thursday through Sunday, every week of the fair. What does taste the red, white, and blue mean to you? How are the county fair? Red, white, and blue from the Alameda County Fair, June 18th through July 6th. Enjoy free Big O Tires concerts nightly at the Safeway Amphitheater. Visit AlamedaCountyFair.com. Talk to us, baby.